Hello guys and gals, I'm back here, I'm in my kitchen, or in my dining room. Uh, the video you're going to see tonight, i already been out to the barn and did this video. It doesn't really have a lot of hands-on content to it, but I wanted to show you the progress of uh, the trail bike, mini bike that I've been working on. I, uh, I know it needs a new motor, motor mount, it needs uh, the brakes worked on a little bit. I need to paint it up because the paint job's hideous. I may even try to uh, add some splash guards to it and it needs a new brake lever which is on its way and uh, I'd like to get that fixed up. I might even like to build a luggage rack for the back of it but uh, I just need to get all that stuff working. I need to get the motor mount fixed and uh, I want to get it ready for the hunting season which is coming up in a month. So I'll just let you see what's, what I did tonight and I'll explain a lot of what I'm going to do. So uh, watch the video and have, enjoy. We'll see you next time. Welcome fans and friends. Here we are to another fun episode of Bob's Barn Workshop. And today we are actually going to be working in the real barn. Got a little AC DC going here. I'll turn off the radio. Alright, so you guys have seen this before. This is the Baja Warrior. Uh, mini bike, trail bike, whatever you want to call it. It's got the uh, Predator 212 engine on it and a uh, 30 series torque converter. I'm not sure. I think it was one of those cheap $50 ones from eBay. Uh, I got a lot to do to this to get it trail bike ready for the hunting season coming up in a month. Got to paint these uh, horrible fenders. Going to do some camo leaf on that like I uh, do with my hunting rifles. I'll show you how that's done. Gonna work on the rear brakes because they squeal like crazy. I'm gonna pull them apart, uh, see if they're all glazed up. I'm gonna try putting some rubber compound on the drum itself to stop it from squealing, some brake squeal. And uh, ultimately, if that doesn't fix it, I'm gonna order some that are supposed to be quieter. Uh, let's see, what else do I need to do? I'm not gonna mess with the governor on the engine yet because it's got plenty of power and I'm not worried about trying to go 45 miles an hour. I'm going to put some uh, Splash plates. I've got some of this sheet metal. It's about 80 thousandths. It's pretty thick. But what I'm going to do is, you see that triangle hole in the frame where the mud is going to fly up all over the engine when you hit a puddle? I'm going to put it on right here and bend it right around the bottom of the frame. I got another log piece like this, and I'm going to do the same in the back. I'm going to run it from right between the fender and that frame member right down to the frame so it's in there this way and so it acts like a mud flap. So I'm going to box in that frame a little bit. Um, let's see what else do I want to do. As I said, get it painted up. I've got a new brake lever on order. That one's busted off. Everything else is working good. I was thinking about buying some shocks and building the frame for the seat and welding the brackets down here on the frame and adding a little bit of spring to the seat because this has no rear suspension. I did let a little air out of the tires. They were hard as a rock. I felt like I was running down the railroad tracks. So, uh, I basically am not going to show all this disassembly because it's just going to be taking all the bolts off. I'm going to pull the engine all the way off. Oh, the engine plate itself is actually a sheet metal it's not only about half as thick as this even. So I'm going to go up to the local uh, farm implement manufacturing shop that uh, advertises that they sell sheet metal and, and metal pieces and I'm going to have them make a new plate out of thicker metal. So I've got to cut that one off, put the new one on. I might raise it just a little bit. So I can get this torque converter clear, but I can't go too far because I'll be hitting the frame. So maybe I won't do that. I can move the engine farther forward, but that means a longer chain, and I don't want to do that either. So uh, we'll tear it all apart, and I'll come back to you when we get all the parts off. And uh, that's it for this short little bit of video. I'm in here in my nice heated garage. It's in the 40s the last couple of days here in, in western New York. So uh, I'm going to paint everything up. The only thing I'm not going to... I think I'm going to do the whole frame in OD green. And then just do the camo fenders. Maybe OD green the gas tank and the... Maybe I'll do it to the engine. 
All the stuff that's black on the engine, maybe I'll pull it off and paint it OD green too. That'll be cool. And then I'll do the, the leaves and the ferns and, and that such stuff on the on the uh, fenders themselves. Maybe maybe do the inside of the wheels brown or something to kind of contrast black and brown. You know, it seems to be a good camo color for parking it in the woods. So we'll come back when we get her uh, torn apart. All right, guys. She's all pulled apart. The engine is off. You can see the uh, vibration has torn this mounting bracket up this base plate for the motor. So I'm going to grind this out with the grinder, cut those valves, smooth them out, get a brand new plate, probably twice as thick, 3 16 Maybe I'll get the shop to bend the edge on this so it's like an angle iron. Um, just been cleaning it up a little bit. I pulled out the rear axle, of course. Uh, sanded the inside of the brake drums, cleaned it all out, cleaned the brake shoes off, sanded them. If they keep squealing, I'm going to change them for those better brand of, uh, of brake shoes with the slotted and everything. A little bit of the air, I got a little, let a little of the air out of the tires because they were really, really hard, stone hard. That helps it ride a little better. I'm still thinking about cutting this bracket out and putting some, uh, some sort of, uh, uh, shock absorbers. I've seen them on line, these guys using them on the back of the seat, maybe raising the seat just a little bit. Putting a hinge or something right on this bracket. Making a metal frame for it so it gets a little articulation. Softens it on my fat butt. So, uh, that's it for now. I'm going to post this up for you guys. I, I'm going to cut out the oil sensor. That already was cut out. Um, as I said, I got to put those. Now you can see what I'm going to do with these plates. I think better is uh, this one's been used a little bit, but it's big enough for the back. I'm going to cut it the size, put it right in here, and wrap it right around the bottom, sort of like a permanent mud flap. And on the back, I'm going to install it. just like this so that rear tire doesn't sling mud all over the because this is going to be a trail bike I don't want it slinging mud all over I might just bolt this one I just put a couple of bolts through this and it might be all good just drill two holes and cut it off and I won't have to weld it all right I want to say good night to you guys that's uh, it's time for the walking dead anyway so we'll see you tomorrow Take care. Oh yeah, and I hit those fenders with a little bit of uh, Rust-Oleum spray paint here to get rid of that, whatever that gray snake skin paint job the guy had on there. This will be a great beginning for doing my masking and spray painting anyway, because I'll leave behind some, I'll put some tape and branches across this. I'll start laying, layering it with greens and browns and, uh, and beige. And uh, when I peel it all off, it'll be the coolest paint job you ever saw. All right. Take care. It's another good night from Bob's Barn Workshop.